One of the most important steps for an integrated pest management approach to be successful is knowing what you're dealing with. And this means knowing if you're dealing with broadleaf weeds in the lawn or if you're trying uh, to eliminate grassy weeds. So we've created here a couple of images and some identifiers on how do you know if it's a broadleaf weed? How do you know if it's a grassy weed? Some things are obvious. Broadleaf has that wide leaf, as you can see in the chickweed. It has a network of veins that spread out across that leaf. And most of them, although not all, have a showy flower. Um, this can mean that the flower doesn't necessarily have to be white like the chickweed here. It can be purple, it can be yellow, it can be pink. But most of the time you'll see that flower because that's uh, the way that this, this plant or this weed will propagate. Now, when it comes to grassy weeds, it's a little bit different. A grassy weed has a long and narrow leaf, as you can see, and those veins run parallel to the leaf versus the network of veins that you see in the brown leaf weed. And we have an image of crabgrass here. So something that we use to identify what kind of grassy weed you're, you're having, because they all kind of look alike, is uh, as you see in the circle, that uh, seed head there. That gives us an indication of what kind of grassy weed we're dealing with here. Now, we know it's impossible to memorize all the names of these weeds, but we're here as a resource for you. So please feel free to send us pictures if there's a specific weed that you've been trying to deal with and you can't get rid of, we'd be happy to help you identify it and offer more specific recommendations. And Ivana is actually later on in the webinar going to go through some um, some identifiers for the most common weeds that you're experiencing right now. So moving right along, what does Sunday offer when it comes to broadleaf weeds? Um, we do have a product called Dandelion Doom that a lot of you might be familiar with. This product is a post-emergent herbicide and it is, um, it is for specifically broadleaf weed control. When it comes to grassy weeds, we have a different product, which is Weed Warrior, that's focused on controlling grassy weeds. Now, I do want to give you a heads up about Weed Warrior. It's effective. However, because grassy weeds are very biologically similar to turf grass, you will see some damage from Weed Warrior if you apply it on your lawn. So we usually only recommend applying weed warrior to weeds that are growing within the lawn if you're 100% sure that your grass is dormant or if you're applying this product in areas that don't see lawn growth. So think like pavers, uh, driveways, garden beds. That, those are, are, are safe spaces to apply weed warrior because you won't see the damage to your actual grass. Now, the second part as I mentioned earlier about integrated pest management or approaching weed control in that way is understanding why you have weeds because knowing why those weeds are sprouting is going to help us. Um, it's going to help us change that environment, adjust what you're already doing. So why do you, why do weeds sprout or why are they in the lawn? Several reasons and some of them are here. Watering too much or you're watering too little. Um, and we'll, we'll see how this, these practices affect the actual conditions of your, of your lawn. It could be that your, your soil is depleted of some nutrients um, that it needs to, to have grass thrive in that environment. It also could be that your lawn is too thin or has a lot of bare areas. We wanna point out that weeds are opportunistic growers, meaning that they'll grow anywhere where they possibly can. So if you don't have grass growing there, you can rest assured that weeds are gonna start sprouting. The timing of some of the most common lawn practices like aerating, uh, thatching, can also be a reason why you're seeing weed growth. Some of these practices we recommend to only, um, not to only do in the fall, but preferably doing them in the fall to reduce the likelihood of excessive weed growth after aerating or after thatching. And environmental factors also influence the amount of weeds that you're seeing in the lawn. Now, we won't really touch too much on, on this. Ivana will talk about some environmental factors um, that contribute to specific weed growth and how to tackle that. But 
these are situations that you, you can't really change. They're not in your control. And what I mean by environmental factors are, does your neighbor have a lot of weeds? Do you live next to or across from, uh, from a green space, like a park that has a lot of weeds as well? So these factors, you know, your, your specific location, you can't change. Um, but what we're gonna talk about should create better conditions for, for better and healthier grass growth, which in turn means less weed growth. So let's talk about watering first. Now you'll see a couple pictures here. And what we wanna illustrate is that different soils will probably require different, um, different types of watering. So the first image shows you a, um, a clay-like soil. And for clay-like soils, we usually recommend for you to either cycle, um, cycle soak like you see here, or just um, leave, leave your irrigation system or water for longer, but less amounts of time over the week. So we usually recommend um, about two, could be two, one, sorry, one to two times a week. Um, but you always want to adjust that amount for any weather conditions like rain. So the, the ideal amount of water that you'd be giving your lawn is about 0.3 to 0.5 inches per session, which is usually about 0.75 to an inch of water a week. Now, this, again, can be adjusted depending on if you, if you have rain. Another factor is what if you don't have clay soil? What if you have sandy soil? Now, watering for sandy soil is a completely different approach. You actually want to water a little bit more often and a little less every time because sand does drain soil very well, um, opposite of clay. So as you can see, like this really does have an impact in, in how you're watering. Um, and something that you'll see pointed out throughout the webinar is that, you know, lawns are a living thing and so are weeds. So you really do have to adjust these practices as the year goes, depending on the weather um, and the needs of your lawn. So it's a very, uh, it's a very much hands-on approach to both lawn care and, and weed control. So what happens, um, and you might be seeing this already, what happens when the watering is off? Well, it creates, again, that environment for weeds to grow because the grass isn't doing so well. And there are some weeds that thrive specifically in conditions where the soil is very dry or the soil is excessively damp or moist. And Yvonne is actually going to touch on, on some of those weeds. So if you see those, consider those indications that you might need to make uh, some watering adjustments. So talking about mowing, this is something that's actually really important that a lot of people forget to do at the beginning of the growing season which is sharpening your mower blades. Why is this important? Because if you do not, if you have dual blades, you will um, damage that grass blade when you're mowing, which in turn causes the grass um, to not recover as quickly from that, from that cut and leave space for a fungal, for a disease issue, which again, uh, uh, stops its growing or stops it from growing to its full potential. What do we recommend um, when it comes to actual mowing practices? You wanna mow high, you wanna make sure you're mowing often, especially if you have a good amount of weeds because you wanna make sure that you're tackling those weeds, you're mowing over them before they go into seed or flower. And finally, you wanna make sure you bag your clippings. So you'll usually, you know, we recommend for you to, to leave those clippings on the lawn. They add organic matter. However, when you're experiencing a lot of weed growth, what you're doing when you leave those clippings is you're basically helping the weed spread by leaving those, those seeds there. So by bagging them, you're kind of reducing the possibility of uh, seed to soil contact when it comes to your weeds. And if you need a refresher on what we recommend for mowing height, um, and how often do you need to mow? We actually have a mowing height chart that you see here, but it's also available on one of our shed articles that um, you'll see in your follow-up email. Now, a couple important aspects of, of creating a better environment for grass and a less 
uh, suitable environment for weeds is making sure you amend and repair your soil. What does this look like in practice? So if you have a Sunday custom plan, you should have your soil test results, or if you just submitted them, you'll have them soon. And one of the things that we check for is your soil fertility. So I highly recommend for you to look at those results and under soil fertility, look at the organic matter and look at the soil pH from your specific soil. This is because a high organic matter is gonna encourage new grass growth or your, even your existing grass to, to grow at its full potential. What happens uh, if you see that you're not, you don't have that high organic matter percentage there? That's not a problem. You can add organic matter onto your, onto your lawn to benefit your soil. You can add it uh, by um, turkey compost, like we have listed here, compost soils, topsoil, although it, it isn't the most nutrient dense option, it will um, help you with any seeding uh, or slotting efforts. And it also improves the overall texture of your soil. So if you have incredibly sandy soil, if your soil is too um, high in clay percentage, topsoil is actually gonna benefit that soil consistency as well. What um, when it comes to your soil pH, grass can pretty much tolerate a, a, a broad range, as you can see here, 4.0 to 9.0, a broad um, range in that pH scale. However, if your soil is more on the acidic side, it's gonna cater better to some weeds like moss growth, um, which um, if you do see, then lime applications is something we recommend. What happens if your soil is more on the alkaline side? Well, you can use sphagnum peat or mulch or compost to, to that soil to actually, um, with time, move that needle. Now, keep in mind that it takes a lot of uh, lime, mulch, or compost and time to actually move that needle significantly. So this, is, is, this isn't something I would necessarily focus too heavily on, but definitely want to highlight adding the organic matter and in improving soil texture. Now, when it comes to repairing the lawn, um, southern lawns can be a little tricky because a lot of um, the, a couple of the most popular grasses, especially St. Augustine that some of you probably have, um, is not propagated through seed. It doesn't produce viable seed meaning that you can only patch bare areas through uh, sod, plugs, or sprigs. When it comes to grasses like Bermuda, centipede, zoysia, then these do produce viable seed. It can be purchased um, through your local hardware store, through your local garden center. Sunday offers Bermuda seed, but when it comes to grasses like St. Augustine, you do have to source that sod um, or those plugs. Alternatively, if you have an area of your lawn that's just thriving and doing beautifully, you can take those um, small sprigs from those areas and plug them into areas that are struggling. And um, by, by following the practices that we, we already mentioned, you'll see, um, you'll see some, some grass growth from those sprigs over time. But I wanna highlight here what I mentioned before, that if you have bare areas, weeds are gonna move in. If you don't have grass growing, something else will. So that's why we're encouraging um, and putting emphasis on repairing the lawn as soon as possible. So just to summarize, because I know we've given a, quite some information here. When you're dealing with weeds uh, from an integrated pest management perspective, you want to do a few things. Um, you wanna identify if you're dealing with a broadleaf weed or with a grassy weed, and then you want to treat that with the appropriate product as soon as possible, ideally before that weed goes to flower or before it starts sprouting its seed heads. Now for broadleaf weed control, we have dandelion doom. For grassy weed control, we have weed warrior, but there are also other natural alternatives um, that you can use for, for weed control as well. And we'd be happy to share those with you if you want to reach out to us. Um, 
You also want to make sure that you are adjusting your regular lawn practices to create a better environment for your grass. This means you want to audit your, your sprinkler system if you have one, or just um, keep track of how much water you're giving your lawn for each watering session if you're watering manually, and make the adjustments as needed throughout the year, depending on your rain, depending on the season. Look at your temperature. Is it too warm? Does the lawn need a little bit more water this week because the temperature is too high? Or if it's unseasonally cool, um, then the lawn might not need as much water. So what we want to do here is avoid, like you saw in the pictures, just the overall uh, drying of the soil or having water pool on the lawn. So this is creating a soil texture environment that's more favorable for weed, weed growth. You also want to make sure you're mowing appropriately, that you're mowing appropriately for your grass type and that you're also keeping uh, your grass healthy by sharpening your blades uh, before you mow. And finally, just amending your soil with lime if needed, with mulch if needed, uh, topsoil, and repairing any bare areas or, or thinning spots around, around the lawn. So if you want to talk a little bit more in detail about any of these, the Yard Guidance team is more than happy to talk to you. We will be sharing a lot of resources for you in the follow-up email where you can look into these points a little bit more in detail. And just a quick reminder for everybody, not all weeds are bad um, and it's nearly impossible to have a lawn that is 100% weed free. The goal here um, is to create a healthy yard, a healthy lawn space, and that in turn will um, keep weeds at bay. And on that note, not all weeds are bad. We, I'm gonna hand it over to, to Ivana. She's gonna talk us through some very specific weeds that you're probably already seeing in the lawn and how to treat them. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about a few common ones. Um, if there are any I don't cover over the webinar and you really want to either see covered or you wanna talk about, you know, feel free to email us at webinars at getsunday.com. If you want to put them into the question and answer box as I'm going through these, um, feel free to do so and I can touch on those as well. So I'm gonna start out with probably the most common weed ever, the dandelion, um, you know, dandelion beans me after it. Um, it pops up in every sort of uh, lawn. Um, it can pop up in your lawn even if there aren't any environmental conditions that are wrong. We did have a question from someone who um, is trying to kind of battle them uh, one of their neighbors isn't really pulling them, so they're getting a lot of the seeds from there. Um, best thing to do, honestly, you know, you can't change other people's habits, but as long as you're either pulling the flowers or mowing and bagging or clippings often, that should keep them under control along with spraying them with dandelion doom when they're young. Um, you know, sometimes all you can do is whatever's in your lawn. Um, but they are, you know, usually pretty easy to hand pull. They've got a long taproot. Usually I wait till after a rain or after I've watered a few hours um, previously and pull them then because it's a lot easier to get them out of the soil. Um, they aren't, can be kind of pokey, so maybe wear some gloves, but for the most part, they're not, the, um, they're not a very aggressive spreader. In addition to that, annual bluegrass is another one that's not too aggressive, but you will start to see it now. Um, it is a grassy weed, so you would want to use something like a weed warrior on it. If your grass is no longer dormant, um, but you can seed it, I, you could spray the poa annua um, and let it die off and then seed that area um, in case any of the turf around it got damaged. It does tend to die off once temperatures are warm. So once you start to hit the 80 degree days, um, it will start to die off. It can't really handle those. You know, luckily in the South, we get those pretty quickly. So you won't see it for too long, but if it is bothering you, you know, just make sure to remove those seed heads. Um, you can try and spray and then overseed um, using that weed warrior. Uh, usually it'll start to look um, a little different than your grass. It is a lighter texture. Um, it's a finer textured leaf um, with like a brighter color. So they're pretty easy to spot and treat um, if you have those in your lawn. But again, they will die off once temperatures get really warm. Um, crabgrass is probably one of the worst um, spreaders here, one of the worst offenders. Uh, it does not like higher mowed lawns, um, it wants to stay kind of low. So mowing a high, um, probably on the higher end of the mowing chart would be beneficial. Um, doing things, you know, mowing often to remove those seed heads. 
um, and then pulling it as well. And that's another thing too that I would use the weed wire on if your grass is dormant or if you're planning to overseed. And it is quite an aggressive weed. So once you start to see it, you know, pull those seed heads off. Usually when I, when I take my dogs out in the morning, I kind of walk around the lawn pulling any seed heads that I see just to make sure um, because it will grow quickly and you want to make sure to stay on top of it. Clover is actually one of my favorite weeds um, because it can be beneficial to your lawn. Um, it actually will uh, usually spread in lawns that um, maybe don't have as much nitrogen because they do use their roots to um, have a symbiotic relationship with the fungus to create its own nitrogen. So if you're having issues with having enough nitrogen in your lawn, maybe your lawn's turning a little bit light yellow, um, just think about leaving it there, letting it kind of um, help your lawn out with extra, extra nitrogen. Um, the birds love it because it attracts, you know, other insects. Bees love it. Butterflies love it. Um, you know, you'll get a little bit of a show with the little flowers that kind of look like pom-poms. Um, it does look very similar to oxalis, which is another broadleaf weed. Um, but oxalis does not have those beneficial characteristics of the nitrogen inclusion. Um, so you could remove it as well. I think it's cute. Maybe you don't want it. Um, both of these can be treated with dandelion doom if you just decide that they're not fitting the vibe of your lawn. Spurge is a very aggressive spreader. If you see spurge in your lawn, most likely means that it's staying a little bit dry. Maybe it's not as nutrient healthy as you want it to be. This is something that if you see a lot of spurge in your lawn year after year, I would recommend top dressing, usually in the spring, um, just to make sure you're incorporating enough organic matter and enough nutrients. Spurge loves heat, loves nutrient poor soils, loves drought. You just wanna make sure um, to kind of make that area a better place for your grass. Um, it is easy to hand pull. It's got a central root, so um, the whole thing will come up if you pull it. You just want to make sure that you wear gloves because it is part of the euphorbia family and does have that toxic sap. Not everybody reacts to it, but some people will get, you know, a, a red rash on their hands. It's uncomfortable. Just wear gloves just in case. Um, and it is something you want to keep on top of. It has a lot of very small seeds around the leaves, um, and they will spread very quickly. Um, if you start to see it in your lawn, you can use our Reed Warrior. Um, we will also have a kind of homemade um, weed solution in the follow-up email that you can use as well. It is also very effective on Spurge. Um, but this is something that once you see it, you want to stay on top of it. You want to make sure that it's taken care of because it spreads very quickly. Not such as kind of the opposite problem of Spurge. Um, you'll start to see it if you have a very frequently moist lawn. So if it's kind of like a compacted soil that stays really wet after, days after you've watered, or if you water frequently, you'll start to see it come up. Um, it's pretty noticeable when it comes up. It's kind of like a rosette form instead of grass. It's very waxy and kind of shiny. It's a uh, very light green, so it stays up. It sticks out very well. This is not something I would recommend hand pulling because the roots do have what are called bulblets attached to them. Once you pull that weed, it will make two more, like a hydra. So you just wanna make sure when you're trying to get rid of it, mow often, bag the clippings. Um, if you want to just yank the leaves till they come off, but not the roots, uh, that way you can kind of deplete its energy source and everything like that. But it is something that um, is kind of a quick spreader. If you see it, it might be a good idea to think about aerating and also adjusting your watering schedule so it's a little bit less frequent um, just to keep it, keep your grass healthy. Sand spurs are one of my favorites. Um, you may hear them called stickers in Texas. Um, they can be a huge problem. They have those horrible little burrs on them. They get stuck to your clothes. They get stuck to your dog. You're sitting on the couch. You feel one on your shoe. You know, they're horrible. Um, they really prefer a nutrient depleted soil, um, one that is a little bit more drought um, leaning. So you want to make sure, you know, you're on a good watering schedule. You want to make sure you're fertilizing. Top dressing is another thing that'll really help kind of keep these from coming back. Um, you do want to make sure you're bagging, you know, mowing often. Um, it can look like crabgrass from a distance, but you'll know once you see the little seed heads if it's crabgrass or not. Um, if you are battling these like crazy and you don't want to walk in your lawn because they're painful and horrible, um, you can throw a wool blanket. I've done this before. Throw a wool blanket over that area, pull it really slowly, and you should get the majority of the stickers off your lawn. And that way you can go out there and you can treat it either with dandelion doom, I'm sorry, weed warrior. Um, or just, you know, hand pulling it, something like that. Um, but as long as, you know, you stick to a good fertilizing schedule, you top dress, um, these should start to fade out. 
Um, something that looks a little bit similar to it would be something like a burr weed. The plant doesn't look similar. It's more of a broadleaf weed, which is covered under dandelion doom, but it is something else that you'll start to get those burrs or those stickers. So anything like that, if you have a ton of them, go ahead and use the blanket trick. Try to get the seeds off of there to keep them from spreading. Dollar weed is something that you'll see a ton in Florida. We've already seen it pop up quite a bit now. Um, this is something that you'll see at least in Texas where uh, the hose connect kind of drips. You'll start to see it around there. It's something that really enjoys moisture. Um, it kind of enjoys compact soil. Um, it'll pop up pretty quickly and spread. You know, it looks completely different from your grass. So you, some people kind of want to keep that consistent look and they want to get rid of it. Um, it's something where you want to adjust your watering schedule. So if you notice popping up in all of your lawn, you want to start adjusting, you know, watering less frequently. If you see it um, only popping up in certain spots in your lawn, um, or if you're already watering the bare minimum, you know, think about aerating. It's most likely because your soil is compacted and it's not letting a lot of the water drain. So this is something that, you know, it's just an indication of environmental, con uh, environmental conditions that can be changed. Um, and it can be hand pulled. It's pretty easily, you know, if you yank it out, it does have rhizomes. So you wanna make sure you're pulling the whole thing and not just individual leaves. Lastly, we have our honorable mentions category. There are a few things that, you know, you'll see a lot of, but they're not as serious as the other weeds. Um, something like a hen bit, which will disappear pretty quickly um, once the temperatures rise. But it's a pretty cool little weed. You know, you can eat it. Um, it attracts a lot of butterflies and bees. I just like looking at it. Um, maybe your kids like to pull the flowers off and throw them around. Um, I would consider leaving it just because it's not something that's really gonna take over. Um, cleaver, also known as like sticky weed or Velcro weed. Um, that's something that I would recommend removing when you can. It's pretty easy to remove, it's fragile. So you just wanna make sure as you're pulling it, you get to the base of the weed. Um, but it does also create um, similar burrs to those like sticker weeds too. So if you see it, I would just go ahead and remove it because it's just gonna cause problems down the line. Um, and last but not least, geranium weeds. We put them in there. They're very cute. They're not really something that's gonna spread a lot of um, the leaves are interesting if you want to leave them, um, but they are covered with our dandelion doom um, if you do want to get rid of those weeds as well. And Andrea, I think I'm going to pass back to you. Thank you, Ivana. So um, we do want to share some resources for you guys here at the end because it's impossible to cover everything we want to cover in, in this 30 or so minute time span. So just know that we do have a bunch of information on our blog, The Shed, that you can find on the website on a variety of different weeds, both guides on how to ID certain weeds um, or what to do if you already know which weeds you have. You can look at some of our video guides on our Sunday YouTube channel, as well as reach out to us. The Yard Guidance team um, is very much keeping eyes on the webinars at getsunday.com email, so we'd love to answer your questions through webinars at getsunday.com. In addition to the other webinars that are going to be hosted, our colleague Will will be hosting an order of operations webinar on Thursday that, like we mentioned, is going to cover when to do certain practices for best results uh, throughout the year and in relation to your Sunday plan. So we will be having the survey right after this webinar. If you can stay for a couple minutes and fill that out for us, we'd very much appreciate it. And just um, keep an eye on your email because we're going to be sending you that follow-up email with the recording and some resources for you as well. So we really yeah. appreciate you being here. Go ahead, Vanna. Oh, I was going to say, and just to mention, um, we did have a few questions that weren't weed related. Um, we are going to answer those uh, via email just to make sure those were answered. Um, if there's anything else that y'all have questions about afterward, feel free to reach out to the webinar's email. Um, but for those questions that maybe weren't related or a little bit too specific, we're going to um, reach out to you after this webinar as well. Thank you, Ivana. We, we sure will. So have a great evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thanks, guys. Take care.